if you have dialysis, you don't die, but you don't feel alive either. It's something in between. Kidney transplant would mean having your old life back. Our kidneys help remove waste and excess water and control the acidity balance of our blood. Loss of these functions leads to chronic kidney disease, which affects 10% of the world's population. I'm Jo Colan in the Netherlands, where scientists are 3D printing living kidney tissue in a process called bioprinting. Their hope is that one day they'll be able to print fully functioning, transplantable kidneys that could help transform the lives of millions of people. Worldwide, two million people are dependent on kidney dialysis or transplants to stay alive. But demand far outweighs supply. Every day, someone dies while waiting for a transplant. Marcel Passard is one of the unlucky ones still waiting for a kidney transplant. The 50-year-old law lecturer had his first transplant for eight years before his body rejected it. So let's have a seat. Great, thank you. I got my first kidney from my mother. And you were able to donate your kidney because this is your son? Yes, of course, yes. So what made you a candidate for a kidney transplant in the first place, Marcel? So 16 years ago, accidentally was discovered that I had a genetic disease in my kidneys, which uh, basically uh, the nephrons on my kidneys uh, were not able to filter uh, properly. Dialysis is where blood is cleaned by a machine. What are the impacts on you having to have dialysis on such a regular basis? Usually after the dialysis, I, you are so tired that you are not able to work for the rest of the day. So I'm only able to work on the days I have no dialysis. So basically two or three days a week at, at a maximum. So financial, it is uh, you know, also the challenge. Here in the ancient city of Maastricht, scientists are working on a very futuristic solution. Carlos Mota is an assistant professor at the Department of Complex Tissue Regeneration at the University of Maastricht. He's working on bioprinting kidney tissue in pursuit of a future where patients will have new kidneys specially grown for them. So here we are doing bioprinting, and in this specific case we are doing bioprinting of kidney tissue. Um, we are trying to replicate in the lab uh, what is a filtration unit of the kidney. Our kidneys are made up of about a million filtering units called nephrons. Each nephron includes a filter, called the glomerulus, and a tubule. The nephrons work through a two-step process. The glomerulus filters your blood, and the tubule removes waste while also returning needed substances. Our nephrons are important, if they don't work properly, not enough waste products are purified from the blood and the body poisons itself. And trying to print nephrons is what Carlos is focused on first. It's an essential piece in a larger puzzle that he hopes will one day lead to the ability to print a fully implantable artificial kidney. In this incubator here, we have uh, cells that are being expanded. So we start with a very small number of cells and we have to make these cells grow in sufficient numbers that we can bioprint. So to do that, we have to mimic the um, conditions that are in the human body, so the temperature, for instance, uh, the oxygen level, and then we leave them for sufficient time for them to divide. So one cell becomes two, and so on and so forth, so that we have sufficient numbers to then study on the bioprinting process. What we uh, are trying to do is try to mimic the human body, right? So our body is a three-dimensional space. So the cells are attached three-dimensionally in what is its housing. Uh, with the bioprinting, we are combining the cells with the material that will be the housing. And uh, once we print, we let the cells to rebuild their house according to what they need. And in this case, a kidney house. Yeah, in this case, a nephron house. A nephron Not a house. kidney so far. Uh, we would wish, and uh, that's our main uh, goal, but uh, we are still, still a bit far from that. So I'll show you some cells. In this case, we have these cells with a special food that will make them grow and divide until we have the optimal numbers for the bioprinting. This is one of the key ingredients for the bioprinting process. So what are you looking at here, Carlos? So inside of this flask, we have what you see here in pinkish, is cell culture medium, which has specific information for the cells to divide 
at this stage, but at a later stage, we give them specific information for them to become the structure that we want, in this case, the nephron. So how do we go from the cells to printing? So there are a couple of steps which we'll show you along the way. I will hand over the cells to uh, our master student, Gabriele. Hello there. Hi. So now we are going to remove these cells, collect them from this flask, and we are going to mix it with our materials, so our hydrogels. So material that is highly composed of water, and that will be our bioink. What is called bioink in bioprinting is a mixture of cells and biomaterials which we can deposit in a controlled way with the bioprinter. So what we're doing here effectively is creating all of the ingredients that make the bio ink. Yes, correct. And once we have the isolated cells, we can put them into the printer. Yes, we mix it with a biomaterial, with an hydrogel, and then we put it in the printer to follow up on the next step. So, if you see this small oh, cotton-like... Yeah. So these are the cells. These are one of the key ingredients of our bioprinting process. So now we are going to remove this uh, pinkish liquid. We are going to mix the cells with our bioink, with our uh, materials, to put on the bioprinter. Is it okay? No. Do you like it? So now we are producing a three-dimensional construct with uh, our specification. So we instruct the bioprinter through that computer. Uh, we plan a three-dimensional object. It is basically like the home uh, 3D printing, but in this case, the difference is that we are printing cells with an hydrogel. So layer by layer until we produce a three-dimensional construct. So here we, here we have some printed structures uh, and we can check it on the microscope to see the cells inside. Yeah, let's have a closer look. Has this one proven something? This one proves that uh, the cells uh, are evenly distributed, that we have a printed structure with relatively good shape fidelity. So to prove cell viability and so on, we would have to do follow-up assays or to test if the cells survive the process, if they are active, uh, and if they will uh, do structures within this material. So we can give it a 7 out of 10. Yes, I would say so. <laughs> okay. Marcel has to drive to the hospital every other day to undergo dialysis for three hours. It's an exhausting process. I have been dialysis for a uh three years now and this is actually the only option to uh, stay alive. I need this to be able to function and uh, without this dialysis I will be dead in two, three weeks. So it is necessary and the only other option available is, of, is transplant, which is not yet available for me. I once skipped a dialysis day, a approval from the, uh, the doctor and I felt after the three days very bad from inside. Yeah, you know, I need the dialysis. So the blood is leaving uh, my vein to the machine, and it comes back and slowly uh, with, uh, with the uh, first is the dialysis water, and slowly my blood is coming back now, clean. You've been receiving dialysis four times a week for the past three to four years. Yeah. If you have dialysis, you are not living, you are surviving. You don't die, but you don't feel alive either. It's something in between. And kidney transplant would mean having your old life back. And that is something I very much long for. In nature, our organs are held together and shaped by connective and interstitial tissue, which acts like a scaffold, 
At Maastricht University, the Moroni lab is bioprinting scaffolds, which is a temporary 3D structure that contains the cells that can then mold and build around the scaffold before the scaffold itself disintegrates, leaving the cells in the desired shape. Tell me about the scaffolds. They're a critical part of bioprinting, aren't they? Yeah, scaffolds in general are a critical part of uh, uh, regenerative medicine. Uh, a sort of three-dimensional uh, uh, material that uh, is used as a sort of housing for cells, where cells actually can uh, sit and thrive and be fed with the nutrients that we give them uh, to uh, live and, and produce the tissues that we want in the end to regenerate. So the scaffold provides some structure and information for the cells to take on. That's indeed correct. So here you see uh, a few examples, and uh, these are kind of uh, typical examples for uh, recreating uh, bones, but also in this kind of miniaturized scale, this is actually the way that we can today uh, think of recreating a more complex uh, construct such as a kidney or a liver bioprinted uh, construct. For simpler tissues, we would typically use 3D printed scaffold for larger organs we would actually go to bioprinting, uh, which is the process that you have uh, seen uh, where cells actually are already into the gel, carrying them during the process. And I see you have some more examples up here yeah. to look at. Uh, indeed, for example, uh, uh, we can use the same sort of technology to create uh, blood vessels uh, or uh, vessel grafts. Uh, we can also use them uh, to uh, go higher up in scale for simpler tissues, uh, uh, simpler tissues, <laughs> such as uh, a, a full bone segment. What stage is your work at right now? We have actually been able to uh, successfully translate uh, some of our work from the lab uh, bench uh, to the bedside, to the clinic. We have actually uh, transferred uh, a 3D printed scaffold uh, for uh, the regeneration of articular cartilage, which is nowadays used on a number of uh, patients. In the case of kidney bioprinting, uh, uh, we are not there yet, but we have actually created uh, uh, blood vessels such as the ones that I have shown before. We plan to use as uh, a way to uh, prolong the dialysis through which patients that are, have kidney problems uh, so that these patients actually could have a replacement of their blood vessels that due to the continuous puncturing are uh, uh, wearing out so fast. So Lorenzo, what takes place in this lab here? So here we are actually in uh, the sort of end stage of our uh, tissue regeneration uh, processes. This is the so-called biochemistry lab, and that's where uh, all the analysis that we do for uh, understanding actually whether we have uh, regenerated the, uh, the tissue of our choice uh, take place. You're really examining how they're behaving in here? Correct, yeah. We, so we, we, for example, can see if the cells uh, have been happy into that scaffold. That typically uh, results into uh, higher uh, reproduction of the cells, uh, they, they, they can multiply or proliferate uh, the tissue we want to regenerate. Is it just a dream, the idea of being able to bioprint a fully functioning human organ, like a kidney, for example? Is that only a dream? Uh, today it is only a dream. Okay. Um, I would love to uh, be able to say that in 20 or 30 years from now uh, we will be able to uh, make the dream reality but this is going to be a challenging path ahead of us. Uh, we'll have to see if we will have more funding available. Uh, you know, for example, if uh, national governments would be uh, willing to invest the same amount of money as they invest for a nuclear submarine, for example, yeah. they, then uh, we might actually be able to increase the, the pace at which we will uh, do our developments. If uh, I will be able to see a bioprinted uh, organ in general, being that a kidney or another one, uh, that would uh, enter the a, a first phase, a phase one clinical trial by 30 years from now when I should be uh, able to retire, I would feel very much accomplished uh, uh, of my contribution to this uh, field. That would be the best retirement gift. That would be quite a nice uh, retirement gift, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> but that gift may be too late for Marcel. Tell me, what is it that keeps you going? Because we've spent some time with you today, Marcel, and you have a very positive outlook, even though this isn't easy to deal with. Yes, what uh, keeps me positive is the, 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 the idea that uh, it's only temporary. Uh, if I hear that uh, it will take maybe 10 to 20 years before this uh, artificial kidney is replaced with an actual kidney which I can place into my body, I say, well, 20 years, I don't want to wait so long. I want to have a normal life uh, and I want to uh, feel healthy again. 
they, 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 they give me the strength to await and see uh, well in the future and very possible nearest future things will change for the better, not only for me, but for all other uh, kidney patients. Ah, oh, it's finished. But don't worry, we've got a lot more razor stories for you. All you need to do is like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. We'll see you next time.